What's going on, everybody? Uh, it is the morning of December 15th, and this is the recap video for last night's NBA DFS slate. Uh, didn't go well. Not really surprised. Hated it from the beginning. Should have got out, but, you know, the degenerate in me needed to play a little bit. Uh, finished with 275.9, which was like 10 points off the cut line in a double up. Um, which reminds me, I'd like to check and see where I was in the cut line of 50-50s. It had to be real close. Hmm. 60s, yeah. It was a, a narrow window last night. I finished in like the 370 area, which is me. Um, so there's the lineup. Uh, Jeff Teague, Frank Mason the third, who I hate now. Oh, well, I hate my whole team, basically. Uh, Jordan Clarkson, Dwayne Wade, LeBron James, Harrison Barnes, Jordan Bell, Julius Randle, and Andre Drummond. Uh, got short on minutes. I had projected 261 for the group of guys that I had. I actually only got 245, which is interesting. Um, and that sort of makes me... Makes me bummed out a little bit that I missed the minutes projection as bad as I did. It's the one that I care about the most, actually. So, anyway, uh, let's take a look quick at uh, all the positions. Uh, not too much to talk about. It was a weird night. Um, you know, not a lot of good out there. But let's do this. Uh, so, right off the bat, you know, Spencer Dinwiddie, 6.4x. Um, I was never really looking at him just because of where the studs were last night and where the value was. It was hard to get to him. I wish I did. 6.4x. Uh, Schroeder laid a bit of an egg. 3.7x. I liked Lonzo. Um, but again, that, it was hard for me to get there. And the, the potential injury news was, you know, it was hard to really want to commit there. He was more of a GPP play for last night. 5.2x. Then he hit a crater of Reggie Jackson, Berea, Jarrett Jack, Farrell, Darren Fox got hurt, um, and then you know George Hill was decent. In hindsight, I wish I would have had him. Um, I had Teague, twenty three point four fantasy points in thirty minutes, three point six x. He was twenty seven point five percent owned. Um, yeah, um, I don't know why I really ended up with Teague, if we're being perfectly honest. I didn't really love him in the morning. I uh, just kind of fit for salary when all was said and done. You know, sometimes you end up with guys you don't totally like because the salary doesn't work out any other way and you simply run out of time at lock. Uh, I expected more, obviously, but 27.5% owned. I'm not the only one that was there. Now... If we want to talk about being the only one that was there, Frank Mason, oh, man, 22 points in 13, or 13.8 points in 22 minutes. He's been playing well. And, like, it's, it's frustrating. He had got, in his last three, 27 minutes, 25 minutes, 26 minutes, you know, he'd been, he hadn't been playing like super duper well, but, you know, 0.8 and change fantasy points per minute, you know, 26 minutes. And then Darren Fox goes down. And it's like, okay, Frank Mason is going to get, you know, additional run, but he just didn't. He didn't play well, didn't hit his shots. Uh, George Hill was hot. And, you know, Mason looks like a terrible play. But he looked like a terrible play long before he started playing poorly. 2.5% owned. Um, that's just a, a big, big mistake on my part. I should have not even looked at him. But, you know, it's just another data point for the future. Uh, really, you wanted to be on uh, Frankie Nicotine, 6.7x. Calderon put up. 8.8x, 33.6 points in 23 minutes. Okay. Langston Galloway put up 8.4x. I can't imagine you were on him or uh, Ron Baker. You really just needed to try to avoid uh, the the De'Aaron Fox bomb and Reggie Jackson. 
So at shooting guard, uh, the KCP news came out, so I pivoted to Jordan Clarkson along with 61.6% of my double up. He put up 16 fantasy points in 25 minutes, which was atrocious. I don't, I don't get it. And then uh, Dwayne Wade, 16.9% um, owned, 19 fantasy points in 22 minutes. Um, I thought this was a good spot for Wade. It, I thought the salary was in a good spot. He had been, you know, his all of his numbers were lining up for me. And I thought, especially once KCP went out, that Wade would have the opportunity to really roast uh, the second team. And he just, you know, he just didn't. He's three of nine from the field. But I really saw him um, having a bigger scoring punch in the game last night. And it just never, never came to pass. So... Right off the bat, um, Wiggins was another guy that I was paying attention to. He did 3.4x. You know, Clay wasn't really there. Um, in my original placeholder, I had Karis LeVert, 5.5x. I wish I would have stayed with that, but nothing. Shooting guard was just a kind of a wasteland. Um, Bazemore came close to hitting value at 4.6, but miss on Heald, miss on Clarkson, miss on Wade. Um... Miss on Wesley Matthews, pretty bad, 2.3x. Avery Bradley uh, was able to hit value just barely, um, 25.7 points. But J.R. Smith missed it. Bogdan missed it. I don't think most people were on Devin Harris, but he got 7.3x. And then had I seen Josh Hart starting prior to the news about – or prior to Locke, rather um, – I probably would have gone with Hart at shooting guard instead of Clarkson and paid up elsewhere, but, you know, I didn't. <laughs> so he put up 31 with 32 minutes, 8.9x, you know, great punt at shooting guard. Um, I don't really know what I would have changed otherwise. Probably Frank Mason. How much money would I have saved? Fifty-three, eighteen hundred. So I got up to six. I probably would have ended up on Reggie Jackson, so it wouldn't have mattered. Um, yes, yeah, shooting guard wasn't very good. Like you just, there was nothing really there. I mean, Lavert and Avery Bradley was probably is the best play of logical spots to land, but you know, it's probably pretty low owned. So small forward, I went uh, Braun and Harrison Barnes. Everybody was all over Braun, 79% owned. Uh, he hit value 5.1x, 64 points. So that looks great. Um, Durant also hit the same value, 5.1x. Uh, Jimmy Butler had a big night again, 5.8x. Brandon Ingram went 6.3. Uh, I was never really looking at Ingram, but I probably should have been. Like I said, I ended up on Barnes instead of Ingram. I had the money to spend up, right? I had 300 left, right? Yeah, I had 600 left. Thought about it, but I didn't want to have another uh, piece of that Lakers game. So I stuck with Barnes, who put up 4.3x. I expected a little bit more scoring from him, but, you know, it happens. But small forward is the place where you either hit it big or you didn't. Prince with an awful night. Alan Crabb, awful in 35 minutes. DeAndre Bembry, awful. Dougie McBuckets, 2.8x, 10 points in 25 minutes. Um, you needed Courtney Lee or Caspi. I, I guess I didn't really think about the Caspi uh, chain of events enough. I didn't see him getting 30 minutes. Like I said, I had him on 25. And I just felt like he was going to be so far down the line as an option. But in all actuality... I should have been more focused there. That should have been another piece that I had in my lineup. 9.6x. It's just a mistake. Mistakes all around for this lineup. These slates where I don't like the pieces that fit together right off the bat. I, I need to start doing something different because the, the thing that I'm doing now isn't working. I think I might switch on slates like this where I don't get a build that I like right out of the right off the bat. 
I'm going to switch to like a multi-entry GPP um, scenario instead of uh, my normal cash strategy. In power forward, I had Jordan Bell and Julius Randle. Bell, 85.7% owned, uh, 7.3x, 31 fantasy points in 24 minutes. That's what we expected once we knew Draymond was out. He's been pretty good about being boss uh, in those scenarios. And then Randle, I just thought was in a really good spot. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, but he only put up 23.3 fantasy points in 21 minutes. Obviously, one, I expected more minutes. And two, I expected him to be playing a little bit more last night as like the small ball five since the Cavs don't necessarily have that sort of lineup to run out. Seems like he would be fine guarding Love at the five, uh, but it didn't shake out like that. Uh, obviously, Porzingis left the game hurt, so if you were on him, that probably torpedoed your night. Um, Zebo didn't get to value. You needed to be on Rondé Hollis Jefferson at the top of the power forward board. 7.2x, 51.9 fantasy points in 37 minutes. And then outside of John Collins hitting value in 19 minutes, which is just crazy. Um, once it came out that he wasn't starting, um, I didn't think that that was a very sound move. Then you hit this cavalcade of Tobias Harris, Taj, Kuzma, Ersan Eliasova, Randall, um, all these guys in the mid fours, and then a giant pack of green. Larry Nance, David West, Dirk, Jordan Bell, Beasley, Gorgie Zheng, uh, all hit value and higher. As long as you missed on Kavanaugh and Maxi, who a lot of people were looking at Maxi, um, just not last night. <laughs> Um, there's not much I would change here. Obviously, Jordan Bell was the chalk. I would have preferred Randall to have a bit bigger of a game, but I don't really see where I would have moved there. <laughs> and, you know, he's capable of going for 30-plus on that salary, so I would have liked to see a little bit more ownership, but whatever. And then Drummond, after hating him in the morning... Uh, went over it, went over it, went over it, decided that was the play. He was 42.8% owned, so I was right on that from a cash standpoint. Um, but I wasn't necessarily right on who was going to be best. I originally started the day with Towns. Towns, 72.3 fantasy points in 34 minutes, 7.2x. Uh, he was like 10% owned in, um, in my double ups. Just amazing. Uh, not that I'm upset with Drummond, 5.9x, you know, he got to spend that extra $700, although I guess technically I just kept it on the bench anyway. I only had six. That would have been interesting. <coughs> and then, uh, Love hit value as well, 52.7 in 34 minutes, 6.7x. I actually liked Love a lot, but once I had Wade and Braun, which I guess Wade is the mistake, obviously, um... Once I had those two, I didn't want to go to a third Cavs. So that's why I ignored Love and talked myself back into Drummond. But, look, at least Drummond came to play tonight. Could have been worse. Uh, after that, it was just yuck. Uh, so, Cantor, no. Willie Cauley-Stein, no. Okafor didn't play. Um, I thought Lopez could have a better game. 22 minutes, didn't really do anything. Uh, and then, to get value, you needed Zeller, or Kufos, or Kyle O'Quinn, and, you know, you probably weren't on those guys last night unless you're in the GPP. So, you know, it's one of those nights. Um, I did a minimal amount of, um, entries, so it doesn't hurt me too bad. $42 only, um, and it had been up to, you know, $75 was going to be my 15%, but... I didn't trust the slate, so I didn't enter a bunch of other stuff. Uh, ended up down 33 bucks. So thanks to the couple people that I beat in head-to-heads. I appreciate it. Um, so, th so far in this exercise, uh, ROI of 18.7%. We're up $80.30, largely all from uh, two days ago. But I got a sneaky suspicion tonight's going to be a good night. I like the slate. So... That's it for the recap. I've been playing around with little charts and stuff. Sometimes it looks kind of fun. But, you know, that's the recap. Uh, I think now 
when I see these smaller five-ish game slates and I can't figure out how the pieces fit, I'm just going to go, you know, mass enter like a lower level GPP and hope for the best, you know? It seems like a weird way. Like I can't, I'm not comfortable building these cash lineups on nights where we end up with um, real narrow cut lines, you know, a 10 point range from the three like from the 250th spot to the 350th spot of that double up. So that's all I got, guys. Quick recap. Uh, pretty uneventful game, or pretty uneventful slate. Uh, outside of, like, the Porzingis news, you know, most of it all went, I don't want to say according to plan, but nothing too crazy. So, um, you know, like the video, subscribe, Twitter, Reddit, Patreon. You, you know, the you guys know the drill at this point. Um Come join a live before lock stream tonight, starting at 6 o'clock. Uh, last night we broke 400 people in the live stream for the first time, which is just awesome. Uh, everybody that's been uh, coming into the chat has been great. It's uh, really a fun time for that last hour. You could really see me scramble, and um, you can even see me waste $40. So this is to everybody that was at the live stream. Um, I tried to enter 14 lineups into a DraftKings tournament with two minutes left in before lock. I did not get my lineups loaded, so I put in $40 worth of placeholder lineups, and they were all this particular lineup. So shout out to Eric Moreland for uh, getting me to 17.25 fantasy points, hit 11 boards. Uh, I had five guys that did not play. Um, Quincy Acey with 5 points, <laughs> Pat McCaw with 7.5, for a grand total of 29.75. Um, if you want to see how I ended up on this, go check out the Live Before Lock video from last night and watch the last 15 minutes or so, and you can see this process go very, very poorly. So I will leave you with this. Thank you, Eric Moreland, for trying to dig it out. The rest of you guys are schlubby pieces of garbage. Um, I'll be back with the strategy video this morning as well. And then, uh, yeah, come join us for luck. Bye-bye.